We're back with President and Member of the Board of Directors of Ad Knowledge, Brett Brewer. Right out of college, you started going out to fundraise with your friends. Mm -hmm. How did you know what path to follow? Because like you said, you didn't have that business experience. Right. It's a great, that's a great question. So junior year in college, I worked as an intern for a uh, guy uh, who had a small investment bank that was doing private placements for companies, uh, for public companies. And basically what he was doing is he had a pool of money, in foreign money, and they would go to these small private bulletin board companies, companies with like 15, 20, 30 million dollar market caps that needed capital, and they would connect them and do a deal and put in a million dollars at some reduced stock price. Those investors then most of the time would look to sell that position pretty quickly and make a 30% return or a 25% return. Um, so I worked for him for about a year and saw firsthand on one side the way the fundraising process works and, and got to meet some of these bodies of capital that invest in businesses. And on the other side, I got to actually meet the CEOs that were running these relatively small companies. Um, but I was fascinated by um, the whole concept that a lot, of these, a lot of these guys had started on their own and had got the stuff off the ground. So it sort of got me out of the mentality of I need to go work at a big co company I need to go work at Nestle, and I need to be there for three years, and then I'm going to go work at Wells Fargo, and then, you know, 20 years from now, I can think about doing something outside the box. I, fortunately, as a junior in college, had exposure to 10 or 15 different people that had different levels of success, but they all achieved, in my eyes, you know, pretty high level of success doing it on their own. Did any one of them give you really valuable advice that really changed? Well, you said obviously it changed your thinking. Um, give you valuable advice that you use throughout um, your business decisions early on and you always keep in mind now. Uh, I'm sure I got lots of advice. The, the guy that, uh, that I worked for um, at that investment bank, his advice, and it was more because he wanted to benefit from it, but it really has worked well, is he and this is another thing I say all the time, anyone that listens to me, but he really convinced me early on, part of that business, the way it works is, once you've got the capital sources, you need to proactively go out and find companies that want to raise money through that vehicle. So a lot of it is actually cold calling, essentially, the CEOs of these businesses or the CFOs, and saying, hey, do you want to do a deal structured like this? It looks like you only have $2 million on your balance sheet or whatever the case may be. So the individual that I worked for said, um, don't ever be afraid to call anybody. You have to call these guys. Don't think that you're, at the time I was probably 20 or 21, don't think just because you're 20 or 21 and don't know exactly what you're doing that they're going to somehow know that or feel that. You call them with confidence and you're providing something that very well may be a great fit for them. These guys need capital to fund their businesses and you have access to capital. Call them up and have that kind of belief. And before that, I was much more nervous and just didn't even almost, almost felt like, would these guys even want to have a conversation with me? And over time, I sort of saw pretty quickly that once you got to the right person, usually the CEO or the CFO, and could prove essentially that you were credible, that you had done a deal or that at least the firm had done a deal, you, you instantly had a rapport with the person and I was talking to another CEO like I was, you know, running Morgan Stanley, a 50 year old guy running Morgan Stanley. But meanwhile, I'm 20 years old in college. Um, that whole business, by the way, just to show you how small it was, that whole business was run out of his house. It was five people total. We'd drive to his house in the morning. We all had our cubes with our phones and, you know, we'd, we'd start making phone calls and trying to put together deals. But that honestly still sticks with me today. Even the size of Intermix and MySpace, even as big as it got, um, not so much at the end, but, but early on, we would want to do a partnership with another internet company. Um, and uh, lots of times there's just this perception. Um, we sold the business for roughly $700 million. There's obviously lots of internet companies like Yahoo, where their market cap is $40 billion. So consequently, when you're calling on Yahoo because you want to try and put together a deal, it's easy to get intimidated and say, oh, they, you know, they don't want to talk to us or they don't have time for us or, you know, almost just avoid going right at the person you want to get to because there's all kinds of excuses, you know, I should go through someone else or can someone introduce me or whatever. But, but I guess my point is e even through all the way up to today, 
if I'm after, if I'm go, trying to get a hold of Rupert Murdoch at News Corp to try and pitch him something, the first person I'm going to call is there, and I'm going to try very hard. If for some reason I can't, then I'll go down after that. But it's not starting at a lower level and kind of working your way up, I guess. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.